Our style of play is tough, nasty. Just a team that never gives up and keeps on battling. Now Garner, great feed to Dickerson, and he ducks it down. We really take pride in doing little things, taking charges, dives, getting deflections. Deflection and taken away. Brandon Taylor able to scoop it up. We're playing a lot of great teams. It's tough, it's pushing us. Ultimately, it's getting us better. It's getting us prepared for the Big Ten season. Slam dunk by Ross Travis. Penn State basketball is the definition of grit. We're going to play as hard as we possibly can. We believe in one another. We have great faith in one another. We want more. We're going to be greedy. We have a goal. We have a team goal. To reach that, we got to work even harder. State Basketball in the Paint, presented by Pepsi. The 119th year of Penn State Basketball has been one that is rewriting the record books. Bucket up, blocked by Donovan Jack. Deep three-pointer. We're a gritty bunch that's going to play as hard as we possibly can. And we believe in one another. We have great faith in one another. And I think that's what you're seeing on the floor. So we want to get up and down. Our brand is we're going to defend, we're going to rebound, and we're going to play hard. The Nittany Lions hammered out 12 non-conference wins, which was the most in program history. 3 4 down the floor, slam dunk. Through the non-conference, Penn State racked up a 10-game winning streak, which was the longest streak since the 1995-96 squad. Garner, crossover dribble, foul line, far corner, Ross Travis for three, got it. Penn State was the first Big Ten Conference team to reach 12 wins this season. We're all just going out there with the same mission, the same goal, trying to win games. Um, and since we don't have no, no personal egos in our locker room, it's, it's, it's helping us out on the court. Senior power guard DJ Newbill is relentless. He rolled four defenders on the same play. That looked like LaShawn McCoy. He leads the Big Ten in scoring and is in the top 10 in the country, averaging just over 21 points per game. In just three seasons, DJ will be one of the highest scoring players to ever wear the blue and white. He's got a bag of tricks that really freeze defenses and help him and allow him to get to the basket. Coach Patrick Chambers has an arsenal full of weapons at his disposal. The Penn State bench has been an effective scoring option, averaging just over 22 points per game. When you go to your bench, sometimes there's a drop off. I'm not seeing it with us. Our bench is bringing us up. The young blood has been pumping for the Lions. Redshirt freshman Julian Moore and Peyton Banks have both been a spark off the bench. We have our young guys in these situations late in the game and being able to execute, um, it, it gives us more confidence. True freshman Shep Garner has been a starter in every game and is third in the team in scoring. The way he plays, the poise and pace he plays with, you would think he's older and wiser in his years, but he's still a freshman. Penn State brings that toughness out of you. I think my role should be just to come in, make plays, and defend. Carter inside the arc for two, and good off the backboard. He rushed it, but got it. Bob slam dunk, Jordan Dickerson. What a play by Newbill. I'm DJ Newbill, coming up next on In the Paint. The successful non-conference winning streak continues. Here's Thor, Bucket lays it up and in. He started and he finished it. And then we show where the Lions get their toughness and grit from in the offseason. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, three. I'm Jordan Dickerson, and you're watching In the Paint. Penn State was riding an eight-game winning streak when they took on in-state foe Drexel at the brand-new PP&L Center in Allentown. I just matched their intensity, man. You know, it's going to be a tough game. Just trying to put my team in a better position to win, man. You know? 
The game was the first meeting between Penn State and Drexel since 1992, and a reunion for Patrick Chambers and Drexel coach Bruiser Flint, who both played at Episcopal Academy in Philly for the legendary coach Dan Doherty. In a pregame ceremony, the two coaches paid tribute to Doherty, who retired as the winningest coach in Philadelphia City League history. Duma with the steal. Taylor for three. He's got it. Here's Thorpe, bucket, lays it up and in. He started and he finished it. Love everything about Geno Thorpe. He's playing with more and more confidence, Steve, and he is a defensive harasser. Shep Liner launches a three. The PSU bench knocked down 22 points, and redshirt freshman Peyton Banks had a career-high seven points off the bench, hitting every shot from the field that he took. Jordan Dickerson, he's like a game changer for Penn State. If he can continue to play like he did against George Washington last week, they're going to be a dangerous team in the Big Ten. Look at that. You got seven foot one Jordan Dickerson with that long wingspan. I wouldn't want to be down there trying to get the ball inbound. Brandon Taylor finished with 14 points and 11 rebounds for his first career double double and the first for a PSU player this season. There goes DJ Newbill doing what he does for Penn State. Big Ten's leading scorer. DJ Newbill drained 20, going 5 for 7 from the field. It was his seventh 20 point plus outing of the season and 27th for his career. And trying to make it more with a three on one break. Johnson flips for the dunk. Jordan Dickerson finishes with an exclamation point. So great. And we 11 and 1, cuz. We were warriors. Do we had to do the 40 minutes of Penn State basketball. The final non-conference game of the season was a holiday matchup with Dartmouth. Travis drives the baseline, traffic, kicks it off near wing, three ball up by Garner. God. Penn State came out of the gate hard. Nice pass, slam dunk, Donovan Jack led to the bucket by Peyton Banks. The Nittany Lion bench contributed 31 points in the win, led by double figure scoring from both John Johnson and Geno Thorpe. Geno Thorpe lays it up and in, the basket counts on a foul. DJ Newbill and Brandon Taylor posted double figures, marking the fifth time this season the Nittany Lions have had four players registering double-digit scoring. With his performance against Dartmouth, DJ Newbill broke into the PSU top 10 list for scoring, surpassing Jared Stevens. DJ Newbill. The Nittany Lions extended their winning streak to 10 in a row with the victory against the Big Green. The winning streak is the longest since the 1995-96 season. And the 12-1 start to the season is also the best Nittany Lion record since that 1995-96 campaign. That was slick. We like each other, we trust each other. We've been selfless. We look at the record and we, we don't really care who scores or who's making the play. We just out there just, you know, just playing for each other. You know, we're in a good place. We, we can still get a lot better though, which is, which is really, really scary to me on how good we can really be. Our confidence level is just, you know, is at all time high right now. We, we want to keep it going. Penn State basketball has made a huge signing today. His name is Isaac Bennett. He's been fighting pediatric cancer for a few years now and we have adopted him. He's accepted um, signing his national letter of intent to play with Penn State basketball, to be a part of our family for, for life for a long time. So we're really proud. It's a great day. Not, not only did we win, but we won with Isaac and our program got better today. <laughs> Thank you and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Before the team broke for the holidays, they paid a visit to the Chambers home for a little holiday cheer. Oh, oh, I'm I'm allowed to keep this <laughs> That's a great gift. You're allowed to keep that one. Unless somebody wants to steal it. 
This is like the best Christmas ever. Huh? The best Christmas gift I ever got. It's some sticky buns. What is it? A little Nerf gun? Show it around. Show it to everybody. A little Nerf gun. All right, next. All the spice, man. You gotta keep smelling fresh all the time. Merry Christmas from the Penn State basketball family. And this Christmas will be a very special Christmas for me. I'm John Johnson, coming up next on In the Paint. Yo! Time started, let's go. The success the Lions are having this season in close games actually started months ago. We'll take you into the Yoke Zone. More In the Paint coming up next. I'm Shep Garner, and you're watching In The Paint. Come on, man. We're in great shape. We're in great yep. shape. Yep. You did the go. You did the program. We're in great shape. Let's go. I like the energy, man. I like the energy. You heard this early. OK, hey. Yeah. During the time of year when most people are on summer vacation, and at a time of the day when most people are still dreaming, the Nittany Lions are building their strength and toughness to make their dreams a reality. My intentions with the, the Yoke Zone challenge that we, we put our guys through this fall was to challenge our guys mentally, physically, and emotionally. I don't think you go. understand how really about to get nine. Go! I'm started, let's go! I think Yoke Zone Challenge was a great uh, idea by Brandon Spade. It was kind of like a camaraderie thing, a team thing, blue versus white with partners. It's something that you need to get in shape when they think they're not getting in shape. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Z. What I'm trying to do is help build them to become a better functional athlete, a better functional basketball player, and that's where kind of the Yoke Zone comes in, into play. So, so when, when the guys know that we're going to go into the yokes and they know that they're going to be put through the ringer and it's going to be a difficult workout. Uh, it's pretty hard. It's probably the hardest I've ever done, but we're going to get through it. We're all going to get through it. I feel crazy, man. a.m. wake up, walk to the gym, freezing out, go outside with a t-shirt on, flip tires, go in the sand, what else would you do? You push cars in the parking lot, wow. Let's go! B, what do you got, baby? Let's go catch these guys! Catch them! Put it down for the blue game, game, baby. That's it, that's it. Lower, guys, I'm telling you, gotta get your hands low. You guys drive, you guys drive. Keep your feet chopping. I think I uh, helped us out a lot this year. It was tough, so we've been through the tough times, and uh, we were kind of prepared for playing against a lot of these teams. We, we feel like we're stronger and more in shape. Guys push themselves to the limits, and that's exactly, you know, my job and my role. All in all, I think it was a success, and I think they enjoyed it. The best part is we get to compete against each other. You know, it's the first team to get to the flag, get through all the workouts and get to the flag. is is awesome. Ah! Yeah! Right there! Let's go, D! Come on, D, come on, D. Come on, D. Um, the program forces you to, to use all 14 guys. Um, they let you understand that if, if you want to achieve the mission, it can't just be four guys or five guys. The whole team has to contribute. 
The program, we went through some military-like drills, and the biggest thing that I could say I took out of it was, I think we found out as a team how important communication is and how far that could take you. But can we all be one team with one heartbeat? Can we all go down and come up together? Down and then up together when we do push-ups? Basically, we about to just, you know, go ahead, hop in this pool, get this pool workout in. It's all about, you know, just pay attention to details and stuff like that. The program was more of we're all together, all 14 guys are together, and we have to, you know, accomplish that mission and work as a team and work as a family. We gotta make sure we go in fast because the guys are really treading the water, they're working harder. Let's work harder for them. In a whole, the program, the Yoke Zone Challenge, really helped us out in so many ways that you might not see, again, in the box score, but it's helping us out in the locker room and to finish games. I'm Ross Travis, coming up next on In the Paint. The Nittany Lions pack their bags and hit the road to start the Big Ten season. Let the battles begin. Penn State basketball in the paint is presented by Pepsi. Pepsi, live for now. I'm Alan Wisniewski, and you're watching In the Paint. With the history-making non-conference in the rearview mirror, the Nittany Lions loaded up to start their fierce Big Ten schedule. The Big Ten is notorious for being the most physical and the most competitive conference in all of college basketball. Welcome to Madison, Wisconsin. Local time is 2.17. Penn State started conference play with a two-game road trip, and the first game could not have been any more of a challenge. A New Year's Eve trip to Madison, Wisconsin to take on the number four ranked Badgers. Can't wait. New season, new year, a lot of good stuff. The Nittany Lions came out firing. They had their best shooting performance of the season, hitting nearly 54% from the field. Newbill 4-3. Good, a big shot by DJ Newbill. Three Nittany Lions recorded double figures, led by DJ Newbill, who put up a team high 29 points, which was his eighth 20-point scoring performance of the season. Newbill in the lane, up over Duke and good. Once again, Pat Chambers' ability to tap into his bench proved to be a valuable tool. The PSU bench tallied 24 points, led by 11 points from sophomore Geno Thorpe. Do your job, man! Do your job! Oh, blue! Look at me in the eyes right now! Stops! Let's go, blue! Let's go, man! Be great teammates right here! One, two, three! The Nittany Lions are averaging 22 bench points this season, which is a dramatic increase from years past. Good from the foul line by Shep Garner, and he has four points in this game. Looks like he's playing on a driveway in Chester. Ross Travis pulled down five rebounds, which moved him into the top 10 list in the Penn State record book. Travis's performance in Madison made him 10th all-time ahead of Jared Stevens, and he's closing in on Carvin Jefferson. The Badgers are being predicted to be a contender for the national championship, and the Nittany Lions scored more points against them than any other team so far this season. Duke was the only other team that came close when they put up 70 to beat Wisconsin. The second Big Ten road game was a short trip across state lines to take on old Atlantic 10 rival Rutgers. This was the first match with the Scarlet Knights since they joined the Big Ten. Pass Newbill in the open court, and he leaves it for a dunk. The Nittany Lions continued to play Penn State style of defense and limited Rutgers to just 16% from the field in the second half. Two on one break, and Newbill will land up and in. That's exactly why Rutgers can't turn the ball over. Brandon Taylor hit double-digit scoring again. BT also flexed his muscles in the paint and pulled down seven boards. Chip Garner drills it. 
This was DJ Newbill's 15th time this season racking up double figures, and he led the Lions with 14 points. The BJC was a welcome sight after two hard-fought road games. We ain't been here forever, man. You know, we just trying to, you know, bring in the energy, you know, keep it going, man. We undefeated at home. Feel good to be back home, man. Big 10, road side. The Penn State bench continued to be productive with 33 points, led by Philly senior shooting guard John Johnson. Johnson has been clutch all season, knocking down 16 against Michigan. To Johnson for three. John Johnson knocks it down. The other Philly guard continued his dominance and reached double figure scoring as well. DJ nearly matched his season average with 20 points on the night. He has scored double digits in every game this season. The Penn State Bigs have been a steady presence this season. Donovan Jack had his 70th career block, moving him inside the top 10 all-time at PSU, closing in on Gary Claxton for the number eight spot. Seven foot one Jordan Dickerson had two stops versus Michigan to lead the team in blocks and is one of 15 Big Ten players averaging more than one block per game. We are good, we are. Despite our record right now, we are, are in the Big Ten. We're, we're a good basketball team. It's one game at a time, you know, and we got now we got to travel to Indiana. Next up for the Nittany Lions is a trip to Indiana to take on the Hoosiers. Then Saturday, January 17th, the Nittany Lions return home to the BJC to take on Purdue and the fight against cancer. It's Team Ream Day. Penn State continues to honor the legacy of Brandon Ream. Woodward Camp Action Sports Stars will go big in a post-game exhibition, and Team USA gymnast and current apprentice competitor Sean Johnson will be at the game. One, two, three! This has been a production of WPSU.